Hello commanders and welcome back. We are doing some more on Lesher. We have an SR-11 submission for Manturium where he got a one-shot so we'll be showing you that. We will also be showing you some more of how I have been fumbling around with SR-13. So we'll get right to that but first if you would please like, subscribe, and if you want notifications when I drop new videos hit that notification bell. Also, if you have any comments or submissions, please feel free to leave those below. So let me show you what we've had here. This is Anturium. He has submitted several very fantastic strategies. And here he goes, just uh, using the, a very similar build to some of the previous bosses. It's very surprising how well this works for a lot of different bosses. Uh, I'm going to show you my attempt to replicate this uh, immediately afterwards, but uh, we'll kind of give you some insight here. He's using the toe, and he's under the toe threshold at 10 units, because 11 has to be beneath 11. Wow, there he goes. Poof. So he has 10 units uh, between the seven crystal spires, uh, or eight crystal spires, he's using all eight, and uh, the two storm collars. So he gets the full 70% buff from that, and then we also have the Ring of Unity, which at rank 1 gives you a 60% buff. So that is a lot of buffage. Now you'll notice the entangling roots are keeping Lesher from getting any closer to the Crystal Spires, which helps him to amp up the DPS. And again, that's not super crucial. Uh, we're more concerned now about just getting the hearts, because that's all you need to get the S-plus chests, but he's still able to crank quite a bit of damage there. So now let's show you how I did. So uh, this was my attempt to replicate what Anturium did. I've got the almost the exact same build, uh, very comparable unit levels, but I am on SR13. So here we go. I'm clearing through everything very quickly, but here's where the immunity runs out and everything dies almost instantaneously. So. <laughs> Uh, di didn't work as well for me. Uh, again, I'm up against uh, some higher level units, and it, it just it just didn't pan out. If my uh, unit levels were a little bit higher, I, I might have had some more success. So this is what I switched to. Oh, let's uh, back that up. This is what I switched to. I have added these two Phoenix units that I've been using on my ranked play and I have teleport on them so they're gonna pop up right here and right here and that's going to be um, the, the theory behind this is that uh, with that placement they're going to shoot turn towards the storm collar which is the closest unit and the gust should engulf the lifestone the soul pylon and the storm collar all in one shot both on the top and the bottom so that's my plan there. Now over here we've got my own soul pylon, some archers with block two, and then there's a mind corruptor and the two molten armors. And the concept here is that the molten armor should hold everything off, and if they do ever get below uh, their 50% health mark, they're going to have a lot of fire going on, and that's going to insta kill. Well, not insta kill, but it, it is a death sentence for whatever unit they hit with fire. So anything that gets hit with fire gets percentage-based damage, and it's toast. It just takes a couple seconds for it to play out. So my thought here was, okay, I'm just going to uh, get everything cleared out on the back with the two Phoenix units, and then I should be able to clear through the front and get the damage that I need with the Phoenixes popping up every so often. So let's show you how this one plays out. All right, so you'll see the phoenixes pop up in the back, and poof, they're dead before they can even get a gust off. So using the additional health didn't buy me enough time to get that gust, and it's over. So I switched out the health elixir. Oh, wait, this is the one we just did. Back up. So I switched out the health elixir for immunity, and I got perfect placement on those phoenixes to take out both soul pylons, both life stones and both storm collars. Now you'll also notice that they turn around and gust and get the rear life stone and two of the spider's nests. So very, very solid placement on those two Phoenix units. But my front line is struggling a bit. I, I'm trying to figure out how do I get 
the the push that I need now that I've resolved some of the more critical stuff in the back how do I resolve the front so we'll just kind of fast forward so you can see how that ends fail and then we put in a bazillion archers with block and I, my thought is that the uh, pros are going to be so preoccupied bouncing between all these different units that uh, I'm going to be able to make some moves forward but there's so many crows that nobody moves uh, i mean the melee units have moved forward but they didn't reach the life stones so anything that does actually hit lesher doesn't hit very hard uh, it, it's just I, I had too many issues with this one so I, I had the fire knights kind of back here and you'll notice that i've moved them up in the next video so this was uh, uh not not as uh successful as I was hoping, but uh, it does kind of help us to, to learn a few things about where we needed to place things. So let's go ahead and skip to the end of that. You can see, boom, 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 didn't quite get there. All right, then we moved everything up and we added crystal spires as inspired by uh, Fredega, Stigma, uh, and everybody else that's a ghost and everybody's that, that's putting out videos. They're all using the crystal spires. And I'll link to all those videos below, so you'll have all those videos in the description. Again, those Phoenix units in the back, they, they nuke just about everything. So very helpful there. And uh, this one actually looks very promising, so I'm actually very pleased with how it's going. But again, I just, I just don't have the, the power to push through. I need higher level units to keep up with my other clan mates that are having a lot more success than I am. So again, just slowly chipping away, and I think that uh, if I if I am seeing their videos correctly, they have range on their crystal spire, so they're actually able to reach uh, lesser. Now another thing to note is way over here, uh, this skull of the necro lord is very handy because every time the fire knights kill something, there's a chance of spawning a skeleton, and that's what's keeping everything occupied. So there's all kinds of skeletons running around, and that's uh, something for the crows to get distracted with as well. But uh, I change that in this one. I go for the Ring of Unity over here. Now I do that because I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to stack a whole bunch of Crystal Spires, and I'm going to do a hybrid between Anturium's build and the ones that Stigma and Fredega and Ghostin were using. So... The theory here is nuke the crap out of everything, and then uh, Lesher should catch the Crystal Spires, but they just do not survive long enough because of all the crows. There's just not enough units to bounce everything around. So anyway, that is what we have for you. Again, please do like and subscribe, and if you have comments, do leave them below, and we will have... More content for you in the coming days, but I think that concludes what we're doing for Lesher this week. Or, yeah, for this round. So thanks for watching, thanks for supporting the channel, and we'll see you soon.